Hi, uh, this is Richard Collins with the Internet Foundation. And uh, I just wanted to have a couple of people I'm trying to work with uh, that I wanted to show. I keep mentioning this business of hover boxes. I, I don't have it down. I've been doing it in my head and I've been trying to write programs to do it. It's just hard to hard to program and, and do some of these other things at the same time. So, um, all right. So, I've got this uh, local host, so it's actually in here, and that is because of the limitations of the browser that I have to have a server running locally in order to access any of my devices on the system on my own computer. Uh, I think I want to change the policy for the internet so that anyone who uh, can run uh, locally without saying that and they just they'll have access to their computer. Uh, it's uh, any, all, all, all sorts of anyway. So what am I doing here? Uh, this um, when I I have what's called a Chrome content script which is gets loaded in the background so I've turned that on my view, it's called my view of the page and it's got quite a bit of stuff let me bring up F12 it comes up on the other screen here so this is roughly what I'm doing and my view of the page is really a big mess sort of I've been doing experiments. Every I do an experiment. I, I get set up in here. I do an experiment, and then I comment it out. And then I make another experiment, and I comment it out. And so basically, these are all the history of log of all the different programs I've been writing in this context. And so I just keep doing it and doing it and doing it. And now these are the ones that I'm working on. So um, the um, Linpack on the let's see, is that what's called? on the, the, all the big supercomputer tests are linear programming, uh, really sort of basic, you know, matrix inversion, big, big uh, random matrices. I just wanted to look at the thing. Oh, this one, I was reading all of the lines from all the programs in um, C, uh, Fortran, JavaScript and all, and I was just looking at the basic patterns of characters and numbers and things that were occurring there. I have millions of um, programs now on my uh, samples, and I've been going through and looking at them in all kinds of different ways. So that was just an, yet another way to to look at them. And then the oh, this was this is actually pretty routine now. I go through. I I downloaded Chromium. And I wanted to look at it quickly in, uh, uh, to see what was going on. You know, what, how many files are there? How big are they? And, and anyway, that's a separate thing. But um, here I did the random matrix for the thing there. And uh, now Hoverbox. So I finally, I've tried this dozens of times and it never quite gets right because I, tr I tried it with Windows. I tried it with various divs. It just is hard to get the pieces. It, if you ever tried working alone, it's really tough uh, to do. Anyway, so I've got hover boxes. So, uh, let's see, where's... This is the, when the script gets loaded. These are all the libraries that I load when I'm working. So, and these are only about a quarter or fifth of, of the ones that I've written. Um, I they get so filled up I have to go start a new one and then each one of these I'll do several tests of it so it, it kind of gets a mess but anyway so it, uh, this is just getting there all right so hover box all right so uh, I'm so tired all right so uh, let's get that out of the way so I've got that in here Let's reload that to make sure it's fresh. Actually, all the way. You reload this to make sure it's it's fresh, freshly loaded, uh, so Chrome knows to go look for it. And then when you go to a page, in this case, I'm on localhost because I'm going to read and write files. So I, I reload that. 
and then on the hover box, this is what I did. Now the tr thing here was, I finally got it, I made a padding of 10 pixels at the top of an empty div that I made absolute and movable and resize, well, I made it resizable and I add the move to it, it checks are you in the top 10 pixels or not. And then it's also auto, auto, uh, some, something, uh, uh, overflow, something auto, overflow auto, something like that, that I had to do. And then you can do it. So now I finally, finally have some movable diffs. This is a simple diff. It's absolute. It's got an X and Y and a height and width and a, and a blue border. And then a, a padding of 10 pixels at the top. And then I can insert different things. This, this one is going to be a simple uh, area for uh, buttons. Because when I'm doing it, I, now that I can move them around and resize them, I'll get to a point, I'll be able to save the layout. So I'll say, save the X and Y, the height and width for this, and the content of it in a list of instructions, and save that list to uh, somewhere. And I can read and write files, so I can do that. So anyway, so that's, that's a big step forward now. And then this one was the same thing. I send it a URL and a title and uh, it's in a, basically it's in the same uh, div, a movable, resizable, blue bordered div <laughs> that I can move around. And uh, um, the iframe in here uh, points to this URL and the iframe height and width are 100%. That's, that's the entirety of that. So it's about a few lines for me to now work with. So this it, I knew it would be really easy. I just couldn't get there to get started. Uh, maybe there. This one, uh, I just took. Um, I just took a, 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 a TSC, a tab separated value file that I had. I did a little bit of cleanup because I realized it had. I threw out all the double quotes. I threw, changed all the special characters in there. A lot of that stuff. If you if you put stuff into a into cells, you don't need all kinds of, of quotes and slashes and brackets and everything else because you have it in a in an object. You have it in a, a container. I missed that one for some I don't know why. It shouldn't shouldn't have any quote. Um, maybe I needed to get rid of some more. Anyway, so uh, this one there. Okay, now I got it. So I just added an on click to the cells so that if I need to. I can, uh, you know, there. I don't know. I don't know quite how to make these things uh, set the transparency on here for some reason. I'll, I'll deal with that later. Right now, I'm just doing mechanics. So I got it so that I can do. My intention here is to make these single spaced, single line line spacing, and make them fixed widths. I want to lean, mean, fast. Uh, 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 table for handling you know millions or billions of records and then if I want to look at the detail of them I'll just click on them and I'll, if I have to make areas there right now uh, these these are ordinary cells this is a table cell but it has an on click event so I can pull up a hover these I'm just generically called a hover bot I don't have a close on there I want to do close, minimize, and, and everything else. So uh, so anyway, this is progress, believe it or not. And um, it looks like, I guess I can get down to to uh, there. And as long as it, uh, it's kind of fits here. See, is it gonna let me, yeah, okay. So I can, I can open it again. Uh, I'll figure out a way to close it. I, I, I've got the div up there. It's not not actually a div. Um, I just didn't want to add more areas. I hate I hate in uh, HTML. I mean I'm, you know, the Internet Foundation. I'm supposed to love HTML. No, I hate it. It's the worst thing. Anyway, so uh, I don't want to have to put a box inside of a box and figure you know then do all the fiddling. I know. 
give me some lines, give me some area. So that the logic in here is it is uh, am I grabbing it within 10, 10 pixels of the top? So it's a geometric thing. It's not a uh, I don't know. Um, the, I'm just gonna crunch ahead and see what I can do. Um, I'm, I'm uh, I really would like to spend more time. I'd like to put all my efforts on under on uh, uh, looking at source code folders. Uh, let me show you an example what I did uh, today just since I'm here. I don't want to run this Let's see ether Linux that should be it. Yes. Okay. Linux uh, master uh, Linux. Somebody says Linux. I think it's Linux. Uh, master. Uh, this is uh, Tobol Linux, which is the, supposed to be the you know the, the main one off of GitHub. And what I did was I downloaded you know then I read all the extensions, counted them, and I also uh, went uh, because I I had the file records on them. I found their sizes and I classified them by size, and then then I uh, because of the way I did it it. Uh, um, I, the size is in the, a tenth of a log uh, base ten, so it's actually it's it's a slight. You know, it's just easier. So you just do that. Uh, Excel lets you do that. So um, what this says is that, and this is ten to the third, ten to the fourth, a, a thousand, ten thousand, a hundred thousand. So it says. Pretty much all of those are between a hundred and a hundred thousand. There was kind of peaking here, and what I'm looking at is in terms of management, these things are, are basically uh, too piddly small to bother with, and most people never actually manage them. So when you go in there, there'll be hundreds of these uh, things. In fact, you can check out here how many are out below that so if you get down like here under 10 um, uh, in size oh that's just that's that there uh, there's not that many I see uh, 30 36 of them out there so uh, what I was going to look at the if you do them by type or by extension first of all this is empty six there's almost 6,000 things that have no extension on them and I'm not quite sure. I'll check my logic on there and make sure I'm not missing any. But there, so here, 30,000, 50,000 CNH files, which when I looked at them, I've been going through them and reading, you know, parsing and reading them. And they're, they're, I probably can reduce that by a factor of 10, okay? Just because of a massive amount of duplication, you know. Uh, uh, just stuff that's not needed in there. I'll, I'll do that another time. But anyway, so but generally what's going on is well, all these packages you have about 10, 10 core uh, uh, extensions, languages that take care of most of it and then the rest of it's uh, there. And I, I'm going to basically recommend to put all this into a database and not not do it in files at all and the database can be actually in files it just I'm not gonna let people go muck around and build files themselves uh, it's just <laughs> reading and writing files is the first thing he learned you know in Fortran uh, you know 50 60 years ago so we don't we don't need to be doing that today we need to concentrate on on you know, uh, solving real world problems here. Anyway, I thought this was kind of cool. Uh, this is uh, Raspberry Pi Linux. Has um, It's almost identical if you look at the, uh, that's on file sizes. If you look at the uh, distribution here, it's the same thing, but they're different. And I want to do a, I want to do a file for file comparison between and see how much exact matching in there. So I think that's worth doing. I mean, I can I have enough tools now. I can do things like you know compare uh, the two different versions of Linux, and I can do it to some extent now. I can do it even if there are just typos and very small variations. 
this is just a, a small uh, thing. It looks like 12, uh, you know, 12,000 or so files, and it's a Python thing that for managing packages on one of the supercomputers. Uh, not, I think it's on the X, exascale computer, but anyway. But it's it's there and it it needs to be collapsed into a database. It basically it's one it's one database and a few you know and, and a relatively long you know maybe a couple of thousand lines or so of, of code. I think it'll all fit maybe less. Anyway, uh, I don't know what these others are. They're just some little thing. La pack is linear uh, algebra type thing, and these are just some. This you know I don't. Um, I'm, uh, Chromium I'm going to do um, I've got I've been through it several times I've actually done this already for Chromium I just was in a hurry today and I just threw these few in just as quick test and uh, uh, the uh, the variations in here are horrendous uh, the you know Python there is no there is really not a, a, a standard Fortran no no None of the languages have, have a Now you would say, yo, yes there is for my group, you know, or my stuff. But when you have 10 million people trying to work together, and that's just a teeny tiny bit of the whole, you know, so GitHub is small in, in the internet. Okay. It's, it's only a few, maybe a few 10 million people, you know, something like that. It's not, it's not everybody by any means. And so, Anyway, so I'm trying to get that. I, I think I'm making progress. I, and uh, having a way to display things where I can... I need infinite depth on things. I need the flexibility for any kind of content. So what am I, what am I doing? Let's just close that. Uh, don't say that. Okay. Uh, that means if you get to a page, what I want to be able to do is just to keep moving down. So, you know, you get to a page like this. I should be able to go to the Home button. Actually... On every page on the internet, what I would do is I would have one button in the corner, which is a hover context button, and it's going to be like an icon. So you, you know, you make Colin software, you make an icon, you hover it, you see Colin software. But if you click it, it'll pop out into a little bit bigger, a resizable thing, and then you can make it as big as you need to. And if you visit a place several times, you can save your settings, and then the next time you come back, it'll remember what you were doing before. So I'm trying to get that. It's just a, a little bit. Of, I, 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 <laughs> I can't move it to the other screen. It just totally disappears, okay? Uh, does it make sense? So I gotta drag it to the left screen. <laughs> it, it actually seems to do it, but it disappears. So I don't know. I don't know where it's going. Uh, uh, and I don't, it's hard to track this thing. So, uh, yeah, I don't, yeah. The, I this one when you have uh, some of the overlap there seems. See, I can move that one, but you have to be careful about the thing. So I'll I'll work out the niceties of that. So uh, let's see what else I can do. Let me stop here. I just wanted to show this. I'm making progress. I could really use some help. I've, I've begged people uh, several times for help to get these these sorts of things there. Let me take a. Let me just pick a random. Uh, I, I was looking at Wikipedia. I was I was going through random pages on uh, time dilation. Oh, I'll just look at time dilation. Okay. Um, oh, I can turn. Let's turn this off so I don't have it. Okay, so there. Uh, oops, sorry. There, okay. Um, this one, Wikipedia. All of that and all of this should be in the hover box. Upper left hand corner, really tiny. Get clear out all the space in there. Uh, try to get it down to where there's no scroll. Okay. Um, these pages. Uh, this should be. A, uh, I'm gonna do it. I'll go. I'm gonna. The, my next thing is I now can make any anything movable. I'm gonna grab this. Like pretend I'm grabbing it. I'm gonna move that around, or I will. I'll put some controls on it and say um, there. Like for instance, if I have, I could make a small area here and put put a bot, 
put an icon in for this lift panel, an icon for all this other stuff, which I might, you know, a lot of people never use it. Though. I think it's atrocious. Let me mention two things, and then I'm going to stop. One, these few people use these on on uh, Wikipedia. Somebody ought to check the logs. But my guess is that most people come in and read the content, and they almost never touch this stuff. So it ought to it ought to slide out of the way, or be you know squirreled away in, in a hover uh, context button control that sits up here somewhere. That's where I would put it. And likewise, if you're not on the editor, for most people are not editing there. So what's happened is the the hackers, the programmers, the developers have co-opted these things. Okay, so this is all. Everything is all about the you know the programmers there, and the users are getting trod on. <laughs> okay, um, that's one. Let's see. Uh, let's see where else is this? Uh, to to some degree, that's pretty much the same thing. Um, the, uh, the on uh, GitHub and. Um, there was another one that was pretty particularly horrific. Um, I'll just mention it though. What, what I'm trying to do is get it so look. Oh, I know what it is. Here, I'm in the browser, right? Like I'm in the uh, um, thing. Here, I hit. Uh, let me bring it back over. So I pressed F12. Uh, let's lock it over here. What I'm t I want to say is that Chrome, Chromium, needs to have two versions. It needs to have a user version which is tooled and optimized for gathering and exploring and, and doing things, you know, there. And you not programming unless there's easy for explorers tools for exploration, not for coding, okay? Do you understand? What, the de what they've done is the developers out there who, who are supposed to be, you know, user-oriented, have gotten and done their own thing and all they're doing is making things that help them and it's a small 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 group I bet you there's not more than two or three hundred people who are doing working on the development of some of the key things and they're at least on the maintenance and everyday things so that you know they said oh we got it working we got chrome working and then chromium you know, it gets to be, I think it is, I'll, I'll go check, I'm, you know, I, I'm wrong uh, sometimes, uh, but what I think is going on is that, it, you know, people, um, you know, they're unmanaged, they're not focused, and they're not focused on users, and there are 4.8 billion internet users right now, and I keep checking that, periodically I don't I haven't looked in a long time I mean for many of the 23 years I've been doing this I didn't care how many people were the exact number and but I check every couple of years you know well there's a billion here and now we're up to a couple of billion now we're up to three billion and okay so but the actual number doesn't matter if it's in the billions it's you know that's that's it's just big it's a lot of people I did the, you know, global demography, you know, population forecast for every country in the world. You know, the, the whole schmear, education and nutrition and industry and the whole, everything, the whole country, all the country. And so <laughs> there I know that we have 7.8 billion people in the world. So there's 3 billion people who don't have internet and they're probably some of the poorest in and all. Okay, and they all need the education. There's about two, almost two billion people who, who are first-time learners out there, five to twenty-one, that are out there, uh, uh, you know, getting through school, and they're they have horrible, uh, compared to what could be, they pretty much the the average across everybody is horrible compared to what it could be, so, and that shouldn't be. Anyway, all right, so. Um, Anyway, I'm, I'm going to see if I can split chromium down to its bare essentials of minimal, highly functional, uh, user-controlled environment. And part of it will be um, uh, being able to go and grab anything on the page and move it around. Okay, that's the number one 
thing that I think will help a lot. If I don't like this layout, I'll change it if I don't want to, and it should be used. Not by going over and doing it by, you know, if you look at the tools they put in here, yeah, they're clumsy, and, and the problem is somebody gets something really good, and there's so many people, you know, churning around in here on the on the development side, and they want to say, I want my piece on the Chrome browser, and I want my piece on the Chrome browser, because they're using it. I said, well, just put yours out there in your form, throw everybody else off of your version, and just do it do it there. And that flexibility of, you know, let me let me take off or set up and literally just drag it out and, and say save this this display this way. Nothing gets thrown away. It's always the whole internet. Every piece of a human knowledge is always available. So it shouldn't be, you know, it's, uh, it's I, I mean, I, I guess it's not really a dream because it's actually happening out there. It's just the interface is so clumsy. So anyway, um, <laughs> oh, I, uh, I finally, uh, never mind, I won't go into there. Okay, so um, uh, that, those are, those are the YouTube, I don't, you know, let's, let's, if you want to change it, I'd like a better index, I'd like to be able to talk to people, I want to save things, gather them, organize them my way, and do it fast. I don't want to have to spend months and years just making little lists and things. You can do it if you have the right tool. So I'm, I'm trying to get some of that. So anyway, so uh, same way with time dilation. I think we should... Uh, <laughs> anyway, okay. Uh, and this looks so doggone crude, doesn't it? Okay, so um, uh, there. Uh, there. What else can I do? All right, so I think I'm making progress. I think I think there. I just uh, uh, I could use some help to, uh, there. Oh, I turned it off. There. So these extensions, you see these different ones. I I, I, I spent a, five years on DNA genealogy, and I wanted to write skins for all of the genealogy sites out there. That's part of where I've started thinking about. I'd like to, eat, you know, skin you know, cover over and put in my own, you know, way of, of working with the things because it's the things that you, that are essential when you're solving difficult problems are separate from what people show you and they're often really, really poorly written, okay? Um, people don't work on, on hard problems pretty much on the internet. They're, they, uh, uh, the, the most of it's fairly shallow, okay? and uh, yet the human species is faced with these horrific problems. Uh, you know, it never you know gets up to. I mean, how many we lost three, two and a half million people to COVID, but we lose a lot more than that from other reasons. So the, I don't want to go. Um, <clears throat> let me stop here. Thanks for listening. I hope somebody. <laughs> Yeah, maybe I need. Yeah, somebody could do some fundraising. We could hire some people to go there. I could teach people how to read anything. Okay. Well, I'll, I got. I'm going to keep this to thirty. Uh, let's see. Uh, file type PDF. Uh, let's see. Uh, time, time dilation. This should be fairly complicated looking. Okay, so here's duration time. Oh, that's a PDF. So, so okay. So, oh, that's that's too easy. Okay, let's get it. Let's get something here. So, oh, this is no. Like, uh, archives. You see. Uh, let's see. Sorry. Where are these things? All right. Cosmic Ray Shadow. I, I, this was cool. Uh, <laughs> they're doing uh, 
they're looking at neutrinos. Uh, uh, they're using the neutrino telescope to look at, at uh, the interior of the moon. Okay, so all these people in here. First of all, it's on text. You can't, I can select this, but all the detail, everything that you might want to know about these, there's no links to them. When the, when the authors and the people wrote this, everybody's identified. All the data about who are these people, how are they related, where do they work, what's their background, what else have they written. you got to go out there and do them one by one. You can't see it in the big picture. How would they all do? They, that's one map. And so all these locations and names and everything, it could be a nice little data. Look how much they get. Okay, this stuff here, uh, there's all kinds of pointing accuracy, angular resolution. If you're in here and just reading this for the first time, maybe you're like me, me when I was, you know, uh, uh, 12 years old and, and reading, starting to try to read things like this. And they, you know, there was all kinds of words and phrases and things that I couldn't understand. And so, you know, uh, so anyway, so let's see. So I have to get it out there. I can, I can anyway. So Antarius tell us, so all of the in context information in there ought to be there. Okay, so uh, resolute, the unknowns in here for anybody reading, you should be able to go in here and say moon shadow analysis. What is, what is that? You should be able to go in and you can to some degree. Now I can go in here and say search that on here you get 30 million how many exact ones are there? so there what i want to do is change it so here's it's moon shadow analysis there are 35,000 people you know places that stuff so that's not just a trivial little thing here you know you're reading the sentence and you say oh that's nothing you know it's just a, a couple of words it's just shallow text on a page when you go out here and you see that's there's a whole huge community of people out there, probably, you know, five, ten thousand people out there, all churning and working away on it, many of them for decades. I've done that 20,000 times at least. I've gone and taken things like that and gone, look, what's in there? How many people are there? Where are they? What are they doing? How, who, what do they do? What are their issues? What do they want to do? What are, what are their tools? You know, just keep hammering and hammering, trying to understand it. If you go into any profession, you know, it used to be you would say, oh, I want to go in, you know, I want to be a physicist. And so you'd say, well, where are the physics programs? Now? Well, now you get down to, well, I, I could work on moon shadow analysis. And with, you know, that many people, you could spend your entire life just going in there and doing that. Well, I don't think the world. So anyway, there, there's a, this is a number. That's so many meters, and you should be able to convert that to anything else. All the numbers that occur in here, all the, you know, the, you know, the quantitative thing. Here's another one. So, what does it mean? Suppose that I came in here and said, "Look, I have an eight-inch photomultiplier too. Does that matter?" Or could I, you know, and which one are they using? You know, show me the specs on it. I want to buy one myself. Who's got one? Can I get somebody to run something different? Optical modules, all this stuff. You, you get what, you know what I'm saying? So all of that stuff, then maybe you put it in the text here, and you got to go down there and read it and read it. So you, you're, what's it doing? Titanium cylinder. Well, that's kind of that's there. Uh, in each story, you know, in each story. Well, that's actually probably spelled wrong. Uh, so titanium cylinder that those uh, the light comes from there to my eyes goes into my brain I have to resolve that in my brain I have to remember now I'm looking at visualization of titanium cylinders um, I'm looking at all the titanium cylinders I've seen in my life I've got a good memory I can do that for stuff but I shouldn't have to do it I could do the same thing by going back out to here and say, well, show me some titanium cylinders. Well, that's trivial. That's not very good. We need it more compact. We need it organized, classified, indexed, quantified, so you can actually do something with it. Okay. You know, 
is that titanium better than that titanium? Is it different from that one or that one? Yeah. So anyway, so um, all this. Let's see. Oh, ah, an equation. These equations are not equations. They're just text. Okay. You might be able to there. There's no right click and export this or say add. You know, stick this in my list and check it. And if the symbols change, but the equation. That's a square minus a square. Really not very complicated. This is a sum of one, two, three terms. Okay. Uh, and so there. these things are pretty trivial mathematical things. I mean, you're not talking about more than a handful of, of uh, symbolic manipulations, you know. Uh, you know uh, divide by K, you know, uh, throw that to the other side, you know, move, you know, do a little bit of manipulation in there. You should say, well, you know, flip this around and show, solve for R squared on this, you know, or, you know, click a button here, solve for delta, solve for, you know, in, you know, that kind of thing. Anyway, uh, that, I, I would like to look at the actual stuff. Here's a case, it must be really hard for them to do these measurements. Well, can we run it longer? It, can we get more of them? Okay. There's some really interesting stuff out there and you get a small group and they say, oh, it's so expensive here and we're having to do this because they don't go check and they're not sharing stuff and it takes them 10 to 100 times longer to do almost everything than if they had it in a form where they could share it. So. Uh, so all these all these wonderful numbers in here are useless. You know, if you have to man right now, you have to manually transcribe those numbers back out to to someone. I can't go in here and say, well, look, I want to set this to five. I want to actually, I would say, I want to set this to six sigma, okay, and and run this really really fine, and it'll tell me the cost of doing that, and say, okay, well, who's interested in that? Because when I go look. I can find thousands, tens of thousands of people who are working on facets of this. And a lot of times it's the people you wouldn't even think of um, that are working on something completely different, but they, they have a vested interest and a, and a passion for parts of this that you, you wouldn't know. So, oh, there's atmospheric muon flux. I love that. Why? Because if I search for it, in quotes, let's put it in. Okay. There, 15,000. Okay. That's a huge number because a lot of these are going to be at this level. They're going to be back to equations and details. These people do their homework. Now, they are horrible sharers. Okay. That's basically my, my number one complaint about the entire um, internet right now. Every good bit of scientific and technical and quantitative knowledge on the planet, some of the best of the best, is all on text. You have to read it. That's why COVID is taking a hundred times longer to solve than it should. Okay? Because every single person who wants to do anything, they have to read this kind of stuff. Read it from there. Okay. Oh, maybe it's your first, what's TEV? Well, okay. What's that in units that I'm familiar with? Who's this guy, Nikolsky? I think. Yeah. Uh, the, there, let me bring it up. So, yeah. Okay. So, you know, energy spectrum. Well, show me. Here. Uh, change in the, ener the energy spectrum of the primaries, right? Show me the energy spectrum of the primaries. Okay? People here, they, they probably sit. They're sitting there, they, when they wrote it, they probably have a memory of it. They just say the words, but they don't give you the stuff, okay? So, but it's there, somebody has it, it's out there. And all of these numbers and things, and everything is fungible. You say, well, look, I, you know, less, I, I think it could be different. And you put it in and you say, this is what we got. But if, I, if you want to change it, then you do. I've, I've been building spreadsheets for years, I've been doing uh, modeling and simulation and forward and backward solving and implicit and every other magic word you can say about. And ultimately what it comes down to 
you get it into a, into a place where all the numbers are written down in a cell. They, they each have units and dimensions with them. You have all the unit transformations readily at hand and the equations are in there. If you need to solve for A, you solve for A. If you need to do, you know, you get what I'm saying? So anyway, same thing. All, um, uh, going across a range, that's pretty cool. Not many people even do that. But what, uh, uh, what you do is you go and um, uh, you have to look across all ranges of, of values of things. Electron volt. My range for electron volts goes up to roughly 10 to the minus 24th to 10 to the 30th roughly. That's, that's about how far that goes. And I've checked every single uh, triplet. Okay, So, you know, uh, there's people doing research on every single part. And if you go in and, and you, uh, you know, so these are pretty trivial. That's just a summation, you know, of, of a, a table lookup for different energies. Some D dependent on E, okay, a sum. And here, this is just a, a lookup for any some e uh what what's the d so this is just data okay if, if you get down to us data and if you don't have data you guess and then you keep trying it and see what works okay and if you have to keep adjusting and adjusting so a lot of a lot of this uh, ultimately it gets down do you do a calculation or simulation even if you go in and look at it from a mathematical standpoint a lot of those things get down to you know, is it bigger or smaller, things like that. And, and you're doing mathematical and arithmetic type comparisons on a lot of the derivations. Oh, I, I can't cover all that. I'm, too, I'm way too tired. I've been up to uh, 14 hours today. And I still have more to do. These tables should be tables. It should be actually be in a database. And if you, you know, if you want to do it, so uh, these are fractional moments of inclusive distributions. We glance pods for the two gamma. So I don't know. I'd like to look at, see, you know, what I have to do here, like on, in, in this context, since I'm not that familiar with it, I'd have to go look and see, well, what's fractional moments? Okay. So there's, uh, uh, I, I think it means, uh, anyway, I don't know. I, I think it's there that this is not not an integer. Okay, that's I think that's what they mean. You said, that, you know, that basically was a, a uh, well. Um, uh, my point: you take the equations out and put them in symbolic form. You take the tables and all the numbers and you put them out in the database and do that. You take these things and you generate them as visualizations. If they're generated from simulation, if they're generated from formulas and models, if they're generated from models, you run the models and allow it to change. You go and if you see a person's name or reference to research, you go and you can go back and trace back and get to what they did. The data, the numbers, everything. What did the equipment look like or who was out there? Uh, Here's gluon gluon fusion. Now that's a cute thing. I bet you. Let's see how many people are going on that one. Yeah, a million. Now I think you're not. I I am conservative. I use in quotes like that, and I still there. That's a you know, a, you know, it's it's gotten to be a mem. So gluon gluon fusion. There, are, you know, fifty eight thousand mentions of. It. Now. Google will lie to you. They'll put a big number up here, and when you go to look, well, certainly they stop after about 10 pages. Usually they don't even bother to, to give you. I can't say, well, give me download a CSV of the 58,000 URLs and, and uh, anchors and brief descriptions there. So, uh, you know, for research purposes, I can go check that. Because if I come back tomorrow, it'll be different. Okay. So uh, I, I think that's a disservice, but I can't. No, they don't listen to anybody. They don't. <laughs> so anyway, um, Monte Carlo, all the techniques, all the software, uh, thought component. They have all come. Look how many words in here. There's a 
there's there's a, this is an unusual one. I, there's a good twenty uh, percent of the, this thing in here that I don't know. Okay, so uh, uh, I'll go in and, and do it. I, I can get through this. Now look at this. Durga for spectrograph. I missed it. I didn't get that. Oh, I missed. Ah, okay. Cosmic ray spectrograph. Okay, so there's still quite a few. So all of, all of these things, I mean, they're they are resolvable, and if you get to where the the this is in a form where it knows that people new to this are going to have to go look at stuff, then you help them do that as fast as possible, and all. And there are lots and lots of people. When I go through here, not everybody has done everything. Okay? Uh, I, that, the common thing. Most people get a few, a relatively small piece of the puzzle, and then they work on it in detail. Um, so there, and that, that's why things don't come together very well. Uh, everybody does works alone. So here, in this area, just this little thing here, the people in this could be much more effective. But if you go to their websites, the websites are hard to read. The data is all shared in text formats. It's not shareable as models, as real data, as real equations, as even the images. All the images, a lot of times, they're scientific images, you know, of actual equipment or things. Where's the where are the measurements on there? What, what's the composition of the material? Um, uh, anyway, so solid. You see, solid iron magnets. It it matters a lot what the material is. Yeah, I mean, and down to down to the pico level now and some of the stuff. So anyway, there. Um, uh, th this is nice. I like you know there. I just. It, I, it's just dreadful to me that it's you know this is this is all they share with the world is that oh well, here's some pictures you can look at you know here ooh and ah oh, the you know the pretty pretty numbers and the, isn't that pretty oh look at look at that you know <laughs> that they every there's a knee on all these things don't you know it, it's gonna it doesn't go in a straight line it always breaks there about that about that <laughs> so anyway sorry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the, uh, there's several hundred thousand papers and, and things going on where they argue about the shape of these these curves. <laughs> so, well, that's on depth. Okay, so that's different. Okay, anyway. All right. Uh, what was it? Yeah, same stuff. Same stuff. Oh, these guys. This needs to be in a database. Okay. You don't want to. Why come in here? What, a human supposed to read all these things? I mean, do you know how hard it is? First of all, these guys want you to pay for it, usually, if you can even find it in the first place. You can't search that on the internet that easily. It just goes out into, into the ozone. Let's try that one. I don't know if we'll get it or not. Oh, man. Oh, uh, that got thrown into Google. That's iffy. Uh, they're, they should go and trace out every reference on the internet. Google ought to be able to do that. Test their AI skills. Say, go find all the reference. You have the books. Go find where all the people are who, who have read those and referred to them in papers. That would be a good thing to do. Then you could start stitching some of this together. I can think of about a million things that Google could do but they hadn't even tried. So, uh, neutrino beam. All right, let me stop here. I I keep saying that. I just there's there's so much I want to do. So much that people are doing. It's just fascinating. I mean, look at these. Okay, if you go down there, okay, you know, I'm just glancing. I just I just pick out who is it. You you see something? Okay. Uh, Back 1971, okay, Sternheimer and Pearls, Physical Review. Uh, I 
atomic data and nuclear data. Okay, I think I probably read that one, so I think maybe I did. Okay, um, that stuff is still in text. If you go to the the uh, nuclear data t tables, let's see what is it called. Uh, I can't think of it at the moment. Uh, basically, the the fundamental reference data on the internet it's all in text. You go to NIST, it's all in text. You go to uh, International Atomic Energy, let's see, IEA, all of the all of the stuff anywhere that it's still written on paper. It, they they took all this paper stuff and they just dumped it on the web and they didn't even go and they said, oh, well the authoritative thing is is the paper. I said no, it's the original research, it's the data, the programs you know the equations in there now the equations i say that because those these equations up here if if we rely on this if the only place you could go is to this per these authors heads for what is what are these equations are they complete did you have any trouble with them were there some steps where you had to make assumptions okay well you can find that out if you have the equations to work with but I say, do you know how hard it is to try to transcribe and type these doggone things? And a lot of times they're wrong. How many, many, all oh, years and years I've been reading these things, and I take the equations out and I start working with them, and I find, oh, they left something out. They got the sign wrong. They just left out whole terms and didn't didn't explain them. That you can't nowadays. We're down on pico on everything. Okay, so somebody goes in and says, well, oh, it's only a one part in a thousand. You can ignore that, right? You know, it's a, it's a tiny, a tenth of a percent. That's ignorable. No, you can't. Nowadays, you pretty much, if there's cross terms, you know, if there's cross terms, you know, um, you go out to the, you know, the, the, the uh, uh, X plus delta cubed, you're still getting the delta cube terms are big enough to measure. And somebody, somebody, many somebodies are often studying those. I, I look, I find most of those things. And I, you know, that's what I've been doing. Uh, it's, it's kind of a fascinating thing. But you go in here, you'll find people looking at everything. And uh, it's good. But it's extraordinarily wasteful. I can measure the waste, okay? Because I, you know, I see people go and they they, they will do a wonderful, wonderful uh, PhD thesis, or they'll write some paper like this paper here. This is back in 2000, okay? And you know, have many many of these people just forgotten this? Did they, you know, did they remember all all the? Probably, if they're like me, they probably remember a good chunk of it. But if it gets down to the details, or are they, you know, they say, oh, well, I'm going to be here forever, and, and all of these equations I'll be able to explain if somebody comes to ask me. But who can go through there? Just to proof this one paper could take a person working by hand, could take you a better part of years, okay? But if you did it in the computer and organized, you could train somebody who doesn't even know uh, anything at all about this to read this and transcribe it, get it in, check it, document it, fill in most of the pieces, and then get somebody else to, to work with them and check it. So I can break up most of this kind of research, you know, basically. What is it? Fame and scaling, okay? Okay. Assume that. They, so somebody's, what is fame and scaling? We'll go, go link at it, you know. The fragmentation region. Okay. Um, so, a lot of this stuff transcribes back into lookups that you can really find. So, uh, these guys are doing some really interesting stuff here. I'm, I'm sorry I get distracted by what I'm, by what they're doing. I'm just trying to talk about it as a structural level. You just look at it as a document, you know. Or almost like a computer program and say, okay, well here's here's a here's a person that's not even text, is it? That's, there okay, so I can highlight. So but I can't I can't get that and put it into um, you know, Mathematica or MathCAD or Math or Math 
Maple or any of the other ones, a bunch of people, thousands, not, are they having the, no, hundreds of companies, thousands of people uh, trying to write symbolic tools and uh, they're not working together. They're working against each other. If they get a little bit ahead, they say, charge the heck out of everybody else. I'll get my bundle first. So. All right. <clears throat> uh, all right. So I didn't. Let me stop here. Thanks for listening. I, if anybody has some ideas, if they want to, you know, uh, I'll help you on things you want to do. You help me on things I want to do. Maybe we can all, you know, move forward a little bit there. Uh, it's easy to read all these papers. Uh, you, know, uh, you won't get them all in English. Uh, the uh, that's because they won't just look at PDF. Okay, that that is a word to search. One point three six billion uh, uh, papers out there. All the same. All have to be, if you could do nothing more, you know, with these giant, you know, the big, you know, exascale computers, nothing else, you know, great AI problem. Read all the PDFs, pull the equations, the numbers, the people, the references, the dates, the places, the, you know, the, the um, logic, the, the uh, distilled essence of knowledge of what each one of these things somebody's talking about a Paris agreement it's you can read and process all human language and if it's an artificial language like law or engineering or mechanics or or um, you know sociology those all have uh, formal ways of speaking which narrow the thing and help them look at whatever they're they're trying to study and often those have correspondence in many other things because the good methods come out again and again and again and again. Not usually on the in the world as a whole, methods come out about ten thousand times each. It's not we're way beyond you know Einstein. Oh, there were five or ten people and it could have bubbled up. You know, or Newton or one or two others and they you know it was in the air. You know, now it's on the internet and there are you know not. Every one that I've looked at, they're not one or two, they're tens of thousands. Because what you do is you go find all the pieces that you need to stick together, and those pieces are being worked on like crazy. Everybody uses the same basic stuff. And everything that gets mentioned anywhere on the planet usually gets worked on by many people on the planet. So, yeah. All right, uh, thanks.